how do I tell you a story about cars that do not exist and which may never get built? And what should you expect if you just put down a deposit on a car like that? Here are the top five lessons I've learned from operating in the biggest new car market inversion that I have ever seen. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously, or you can just click the card that's out there now, dude. Short version, okay? New cars are in short supply right now because they cannot source the computer chips required for systematic control of the various subsystem widgets, engines, and things of that nature. This is because the car industry acted like complete bastards to the manufacturers of those computer chips, and then there was a contemporaneous explosion of consumer demand for things like laptops and gaming consoles, and this occurred when everyone started living exclusively at home and working from there as well, 24-7. Today, demand for new cars outstrips the supply and dealers are being completely unprincipled cocks about it, generally because they're fairly short-term thinkers as a breed, as opposed to relationship builders over the long or even medium term. Car makers are ramping up the price too, and they blame this on an entirely imaginary phenomenon notionally referred to as COVIDflation. Here's one such story, okay? I had this guy the other day, right? And he ordered a Triton GLX manual, and he ordered it back in, I don't know, December or something. And he got told to expect delivery in May, which is a fair old wait, when you think about it. So anyway... He waits patiently and May rolls around and he's hearing crickets and the dealer says, oh, sorry, dude, maybe June. And June rolls around, still no GLX, no three-pedal GLX, deafening silence. July, and he gets this message and this is not what you want to hear. After waiting eight months for your new ute with the dealer holding your deposit, the message is, quite simply, that Mitsubishi has discontinued the GLX manual. Do you want an auto? And I would be, I would be so livid, flat out, friggin' unhappy. And he certainly was. Hard to blame him for that. And this is just one unforeseen sort of obscure knock-on effect of the microprocessor shortage that's gumming up new car manufacturing so significantly. You can order a car that's available now, and if the factory cannot build it, you're never going to get that car. So lesson one, if you order a car and there is no production date allocatable to that car, you might never receive it. So you'd want to ask about that specifically at the dealership when you order before you pay your deposit. If you're buying a Hilux, for example, there is going to be a tech upgrade of some sort between now when you order that Hilux and sometime down the track months away when they can deliver it to you and nobody knows how much extra that is going to cost. So you have to commit to buying that vehicle without knowing the final price. And you just have to hope that the dealer is not going to bend you over on the price when it lobs. Incidentally, according to a confidential communication between Mitsubishi Schittsville and its dealers, which just happened to land in my lap from the leaking ship we know as the SS Retail Apparatus, the express van is the only Mitsubishi that is actually in stock now. Outlander is simply listed as not available because the MY21s are all built. ETAs are up to two months on Mirage, three months on Eclipse Cross, four months on Pajero Sport. Merry friggin' Jesus birthday there. Five months on ASX, hello 2022, and six months on Triton. This is typical of many brands right now. Lesson number two, if you are shopping for a car now, do not make 
this mistake. If you are at dealer A and he says to you, we might be able to get you car B, the car of your dreams, in time for Christmas. He's probably not bullshitting you, okay? So I get that Jesus' birthday is only four friggin' months hence, but you want instant gratification, like we all do, just ask Tiffany. But if you get all indignant about this, have a hissy fit and you storm off to the next dealer and you let it slip that those incompetent dicks just down the road, your competitors, cannot source my car until Christmas at the earliest... Do not be surprised if the sales dude has a think about that and says, ah, we can get these by the start of November, I'm pretty sure. Who friggin' Ray? That's like seven weeks earlier. Well done. Problem solved. Or maybe not. Look, he's no magician, your saviour. You have to understand that all dealers are in the same position in terms of these supply constraints, and some dealers desperate to accrue your deposit and get you, as they say, off the market, they're just going to tell you whatever you want to hear to get you across the line. Their mission is signature and deposit, job done. Do not be surprised, therefore, if you sign up in this way and November rolls around and you learn that there's been some unforeseen delay. Like, dude, who knew? The problem here is not dealer competence in terms of ordering or sourcing the vehicle, it's output from the factory. And unfortunately, the dealer who regards the truth here to be more disposable or malleable is more likely to win your business. My default position buying cars has always been, do not hand the sales guy any information that he can use to close you by appeasing you with his charming blend of bullshit. And this is just an extension of that. Lesson number three is closely related to lesson number one. And the best example I can think of is the Kia Stinger. I'm told by trusted sources in the retail domain that if you sign on the dotted and you put down a deposit today on a Stinger, the dealer will take your money, but the factory will be unable to allocate a production date to your car This is an unprecedented knock-on effect of the chip shortage, right? But the upshot is, it seems certain that Stinger will bow out of production totally by Christmas of 2022. Bad luck for you, therefore, if they don't get around to allocating your order to actual production. What I'm saying is, on cars where the death warrant is signed on that model, such as Stinger, get in now if you really want one, because if you wait, it might never happen. The longer you wait, the more likely that is. Like, even if you jump now, it still might never happen, because nobody thought this novel marketplace and inversion would go on quite this long without an end in sight. Still, if you jump now, you are just maximising the balance of probability that you will be successful, okay? But brace for impact anyway, because you might well be disappointed. Lesson four. Carmaker websites are flat out useless at helping you here. I look at the websites of the most popular brands often enough and none of them, to my knowledge, gives any particular bandwidth to their inability to supply the car that you might want, at least in a timely fashion. You are completely in the dark on this. There's simply no upfront information about delays or assistance to you to help you make an informed decision in relation to any of that. And it is the most significant commercial dynamic occurring in the industry today. So this is an ambush of sorts, right? Let's just let that sink in. The core business of a car maker is selling new cars. If they cannot supply them, they cannot sell them. At the very least, this is like a false pretenses thing, okay? Why is it if I go to rubberdogshitemporium.com.au, one of my favourite websites, and I want some, I don't know, Great Dane for the upcoming grandkids' birthday, they'll tell me completely up front that that's out of stock, openly and honestly, and perhaps suggest Wolfhound or Doberman as alternatives for me to ponder to thrill the kiddies, right? If you can do that with rubber dog shit, adult items, fart in a can, whatever, 
Why can you not do it with cars, dude? What is the special dispensation to lie by omission about availability for car makers? Isn't taking a deposit for a car you don't even know you are going to make ever so slightly unethical? Of course, the ACCC remains in hypersleep on this and so many other things. At the very least, if I fluff myself right up at the prospect of owning a Stinger or something using a car maker's website to stoke the fires of my arousal, am I not then intrinsically set up for massive disappointment face to face with some dealer when reality bites and I'm told that it could be never, dude? It's the wonder bra effect, only with cars, and it's not a mechanism for crafting a strong relationship with that brand into the future, I'd suggest. And finally, lesson number five, do not be surprised if production corners are cut and the car you get eventually lacks some of the features that you might have wanted. Most features are microprocessor controlled, right? And without those microprocessors, they don't work. So the alternatives are don't build the car at all or build the car without those features. This is expediency, okay? You might, for example, not get auto wipers on a car you'd normally expect to see that feature on. And in this case, I'm looking specifically at Kia Carnival Platinum, although I'm sure there are many other examples in the market right now. I think this is going to affect BMW as well in the future in some ways. I even heard a whisper late last week, which I'm still chasing down, but which I've been unable to confirm at this point, to the effect that Audi is severely impacted in this way, and they've taken the decision not to install sunroofs in some models. I also heard from the same source that if you buy a new Audi over the next few months, you might only get one key as opposed to the conventional matched pair. As I say, this is unconfirmed, but if it is on the money, that's hardly a premium purchasing experience, is it? There you have it, the top five impacts on commercial dynamics that I have observed recently for new car buyers. And I just thought I'd let you know so that you can go into this with your eyes wide open. At the moment, unfortunately, delays are the main dish on the car buying menu, and in a significant proportion of cases, that's being served with cold shoulder on the side after you order, and of course, delivered on a bed of complete uncertainty.